Yo, what is going on YouTube? Welcome to the Jaff Man. I'm your host, Jaff. Now, if you haven't figured out from that tasty thumbnail already, today's video is gonna be about how you can build your own very custom, very premium, and very unique gaming 65% keyboard. Now, that is a lot of words, but what does this all really mean? It basically means how you can build a sexy AF keyboard for your gaming setup. I'm gonna go over everything you need to do to build it, where to buy it from, how you can put it together, and some pros and cons. So if you do wanna see some of this, stick around for the whole video. So the niche gaming keyboard market has been really strong and going strength to strength for the last few years, especially amongst the enthusiast market. We're starting to see brands like Ducky and Pro becoming more household names than they ever used to be. Mainstream manufacturers have finally realized most enthusiasts and serious gamers that are willing to spend stupid money like £100, $150 on keyboards want a specific set of features and they are starting to capitalize on this by providing more and more enthusiast caliber boards. A lot more people care about things like PBT, double shot keycaps, color schemes, material, things like of this nature than they ever have before. And for this nature, it's making the gaming keyboard market go strength to strength. We've already seen people like Logitech have their own special switches and other companies like now SteelSeries come up with customizable actuation points. This is all crazy, but all that aside, you still can't get what you might really want if it's about the, how it feels and how it looks. I got, I built this keyboard from an assortment of parts originally from a company called Banggood, but Banggood didn't really work out for me. The seller didn't have the item in stock even though he took my money. In the end, I got it back and got everything from AliExpress. I'll include all the links to everything in the description below and I will be going over exactly how you build this. So let's get into it. So looking at this packaging, it looks a bit like the OnePlus 6 logo, but maybe it's just me, I don't really know. Let's open this thing up. It comes, as you see here, with some bubble wrap. Very plain Jane cardboard. There's the keyboard inside. I have opened it before, which is probably why it's upside down. Now you get the little crib sheet with explaining what the different layouts are, depending on what board. You get a braided USB-C cable, about 1.5 meters. It is the cheap, like bonded variant, not a one piece holder. You get a keycap puller and a key switch puller. Let's take that keyboard out. And lay that thing on the desk, turn it the right way up. Moving on, you can move on to dimensions. It's about 11 and a half inches wide, which is about 28.5. Now this is very small compared to full size boards and about 10 and a half centimeters in length. In depth, bit of a hard thing to show you, but it's essentially from the lowest point to the highest point, about four centimeters. The whole board in this form weighs 444 grams. Well, it's a bit naked. We're gonna do some mods and see where it ends up later. Now you can see an overview against the full size board and what a massive difference it is compared to it. That's the little startup feature. It swings past white lights onto its preset RGB mode. All seems to be working, all seems fine. I'm still having a hard time figuring out if I really am ready to switch, but I made the switch. That's the whole point I made this video. So I'm sure you will be too. Now I bought this set of PBT double shot keycaps from China. It has a white and gray color scheme with a few red keycaps, namely the escape and the delete key, which is above the number arrow key. So I tried to make this as neat as possible for your viewing pleasure. I believe I went a bit too much with this ruler flex, but at least I knew that it was all lined up properly. We start to take the keycaps off, a bit more difficult than I thought because the provided keycap puller is a bit shoddy. Luckily, I had my Corsair one, which is made out of aluminium, and that was a lot better. I don't really know why at this point I decided to do some as I go along, but I probably just wanted to see the difference and I checked along the way that it was working great. Just wanted to show you the, whatever you call them, the stabilizers. They come pre-greased with some sort of lithium grease. 
and they do appear to be somewhat of a fairly good quality. Now at this point I switched out my gaming keys out of my K7E because I thought, do you know what, I might as well. A few weeks later now, believe it or not, finally the wooden base came and here we are pulling it out of its bubble wrap. The seller took forever, had to send me a second one and included these three crappy gifts. Probably will never use them. This is going to add some size to the keyboard but not in a bad way because this wooden base is going to give it a nice feel. Comes with this sort of felt thing which I thought was peely but it wasn't in the end. I tried from all different angles, I might still be wrong but I gave up. The bloody case thing has a bit of a recess for a battery which doesn't exist for the GK64 so I don't even know why it's there. The whole thing is made out of pear wood and seems to be of a very nice finish. Comes with these rubber feet, nothing to rave home about but at least it's included. Based on the layout of the screws on the wooden frame you're able to only pull out the keys that's absolutely necessary to take the board apart from its plastic housing which is what I did here. After fitting it into the new housing quick check to make sure it all works. Now putting those screws back in I found it fits absolutely snug, tight, flush, no issues whatsoever in this board casing switch and I decided to put the original screws back inside the original housing and put it away safely. Now we power it up properly for your viewing pleasure here and as you can see with my noisy phone at dark light it looks great. You've got different key effects to single stroke effects and when you type some keys will light up and it will create this sort of disco vibe mad raving lunatic keyboard flex which is all a bit much for me but you can cycle through all of these effects and as you get to see here you can do individually lick keys group lick keys effects when you press a single key or you have your standard rainbow cycles which we will be showing you in just a second now hopefully come on there we are there we see the standard color wave cycles that we're used to in modern gaming keyboards quick sound test I was able to adapt to this fairly quickly. Here's a comparison, productivity mode versus gaming mode. Now, I did make this switch and I have been living with it for the past month. And I will say, apart from the scroll wheel that I used for volume religiously, I don't really miss any of the other features for a full size board. You can program some of the features that you might commonly use like volume up and down, but that handy scroll wheel was just so great to use on my old Corsair K70. After making this switch, I've got nothing to regret and I don't think I'll be going back to a full size keyboard for the foreseeable future. And I don't miss this fat ass jewel cable unmalleable thing that used to live on the Corsair K70 and I'm very happy with this easily hot swappable USB-C plug at least the Corsair K70 found a new home on my younger brother's gaming setup. It was an upgrade for him. So what might be some cons of making a keyboard like this? Well, firstly, I chose different sellers on AliExpress, which means different shipping times from already waiting forever. What feels like forever anyways, for things to come from China. But this way I managed to save the most money and the whole thing cost me 110 pounds with some weird vouchers that they seem to have like come up on a flash screen. Secondly, what's the second thing? It's the layout. If you're not used to a USA layout, then this might be an issue. But if I'll be honest with you, from the little type test you saw, typing the words is not an issue whatsoever. The most commonly used things is not an issue. But getting used to some of the characters in different places might take you a day or two, but at least it comes with a handy little crib sheet for you to make reference to. Just make sure to change that keyboard layout on Microsoft to USA instead of UK. Thirdly, this isn't really a con, but it could be for some people. The switches can pop out easily when you're just taking the keycaps off, but they're hot swappable. So to me, this is kind of like an inherent design 
feature, part of the plan, so to speak, rather than a flaw. And number four, the final thing I'd say is a bit of a weakness is the stupid software. It's very hard to understand, very hard to program, doesn't come with a guide, looks cool and fancy, and apparently you can do so much with it that it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So I've stuck with the preset programs that comes built into the board, and so far I've been happy. Most of my keyboard use is gaming, then video editing, then some typing, because I don't really rely on my computer for work. It's more of a leisure plus fun and productivity thing. So that was my take on building a custom keyboard, a real user experience, because I've been having that Corsair K7E that you saw in the videos for the last four years and nothing else. And it was a mad switch for me. And if you are considering it, just do it. There's nothing to regret. This thing is USB-C hot swappable plug. So if you wanted a full size board, just get make sure it's USB-C with a hot swappable plug and you can switch out the boards as and when you need. And there's nothing to ever miss out on, worry about or be disadvantaged over. So with all this said, subscribe. I really mean it because a lot of people are watching these videos, but they're not subscribing. If you want me to keep making gear like this and content like this, please do hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna have a Ryzen build coming up shortly in the next few weeks. I'm gonna get the new 3800 or 3900X, new motherboard, new RAM, some new storage options, go over the whole build with you on this Fantex Evolve X that you see on the background. And if you wanna hear about why you might wanna consider AMD, I did a little rant video last week, it's up there. So that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one.